Let's talk about favorite tools, features, and elements inside of Canva. So I'm going to share my top five features, tools, elements, all of the good things that I have been reaching for a lot recently when I have been making my designs in Canva. The first one is nothing very flashy, but I use it literally all the time. Like every design I'm probably using it some sort of way and that is the basic shapes and in particular the rectangle you can find under elements and then you can go to lines and shapes and then you have all these different shapes to choose from with the rectangle you can just hit the R on your keyboard and it'll pop one into your designs and then here you can customize it to you know whatever size you need you can change the color they're green Great to make buttons. You can also use them to add backgrounds to headers, or you can even use it just as a box. You can also use them to create a custom look to cover parts of other elements so that you don't see them. The second feature that is one of my favorites that I use literally all the time as well is being able to save a design with a transparent background. I have clients that use other programs for their like slideshow presentations and things like that. I'll often go into Canva to design different parts of, you know, the slideshow presentation or maybe we're working on a website or something like that. Then I will save it with a transparent background and then add it to whatever other program we're using. For example, one of my clients was using Google Slides and they wanted a photo collage on one of the slides. And I I just found it so much easier and it just looked so much better when I designed it in Canva and that's where the transparent background really came in handy because I could put that into the Google slide without it messing up the rest of the design on the Google slide already. The third feature or tool whatever you want to call it inside of Canva that I absolutely love and use all the time is the color palettes. I do have multiple clients that I work with and so it's really helpful for me to go ahead and set a color palette for each of those different clients so that when I am working on a design for them it's easy for me to just quickly know what their brand colors are. I already have them set in Canva. I don't have to try and bring up their brand toolkit and copy and paste like the hex codes or any of that. I already have it loaded into Canva ready to go and just a click of a button. The fourth one is kind of a mixture between a feature and an element. It is shadows. I really love using shadows and there is an option sometimes that you can use to add shadows to images, but some things you can't add a shadow to and so you have to do it like manually. Okay, so the first way is on an image, you can hit edit photo and then there will be shadows or under the effects. So you can just click on shadows and then you have some different options here and you can add a drop shadow and it kind of makes the image lift off the page a little bit. Or sometimes there's not an option to add the shadow to the element. And so when that happens, all you have to do is go to elements, type in shadows. There will be several different options that you can choose from. You just click on one shrink it down to whatever size you need and put it behind your element and then it'll look like you have a shadow with that element. And sometimes you may have to get creative with the placement. But there, so we have added, we have now added a shadow to the element. So the fifth and final one is gradients. I have been experimenting a lot with incorporating more and more gradients into my designs and I've actually had a lot of fun with using gradients. So if you haven't used gradients a lot before, then you know, maybe give it a shot and see, you know, maybe you'll end up liking it as well. And if not, you know, I mean, that's totally cool. Everybody has different design needs and a gradient may work really well for you or it may not. So I really like using gradients just because they add visual interest to a design. So there are a lot of different gradient options that you can play with here. You can add multiple colors. You can change like the transparency. You can move them around to be in a different order. You can choose different placements of the colors. So there's really a lot that you can do with gradients 
and it can really just help elevate a design to be a little bit more visually interesting rather than just a flat static color. If you also like any of these tools, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I would love to know what some of your favorite tools are as well. So just be sure to leave a comment down below and let's talk about it. And since I was giving my five favorites or the five that I reach for the most recently, I thought it might be fun to also share some of the ones that I never reach for. I'm gonna share three of my least favorites. So the first one that I really never reach for is the text to image AI tool. I think it's such a neat concept and I actually just made a video about how to use that tool. So be sure to check that out up here if that's something you're interested in. But I've never really gotten that great of results for things that I'm actually trying to create. Like if I use the examples, they come up with great results. But when I type something in, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm not typing the right things in. I usually can find something that's already made or I can make something myself and it'll typically turn out a little better than whatever the text to image tool gives me. The second least favorite or things that I never reach for is the scrapbook animation. I've never had the desire to use it, but you know, if you have used it, then please let me know down below and what you used it for because I really love to know who's using it and how they're using it because I just, I haven't figured out a way how to incorporate that animation into a design where it looks good. The third one is pre-made templates. I typically stay away from the pre-made templates because nine times out of 10, they aren't going to look like your brand voice and other people are probably also using them, which means it's really not that unique to you or your business. That being said, I do look at the templates and use them for inspiration from time to time because sometimes when you're staring at a blank page, your mind is also blank. So sometimes going and having something to look at for inspiration can really help jumpstart a design. Oops, hit my computer. Can really help to jumpstart a design. Instead of using pre-made templates, I suggest making your own that really speak to your brand voice, are unique to you. And if you would like to watch a video about how to do that, you can do that in this video right here. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite tool, feature, element, etc. Until next time, my name is Brittany and I create videos to help you create designs that are unique to you and your business so that you can step away from the cookie cutter templates that everyone else is using. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.